Hey crafters! So in my last tutorial Tuesday we talked about how to make porn which is basically this really awesome yarn that you make out of plastic bags. So really cool and I showed you how to make the porn, I showed you some things about how to spin it, use up every scrap, um, how, what size hook to use, but you might still be wondering what should you actually make? What makes sense to make with porn? Because obviously you're not gonna make like a shirt out of it, I mean I don't know, that might be a little odd, probably be uncomfortable. But anyways, I went ahead, and in case you're still struggling for inspiration, I went ahead and I made a pattern for a nice little plarn tote bag. So you're going to go from your ball of plarn to having this nice tote bag. And what I also want you to pay attention to as I walk you through how to make the bag that I made, I want you to pay attention to how you can modify this for your own personalized bag because what's really cool with this is the pattern that we use, it can be easily modified with different stitches and different textures. I'm just using double crochet and single crochet to keep it really basic. So that way anybody, at, whether you've been crocheting for a long time or just started, that you'll be able to easily do this bag also. But I want you to be inspired and try to, you can obviously you can make this exact bag, but why not try to branch out a little bit? So give the tutorial a watch and go ahead and get out there and make your own black bag. So let's go. So for our bag, we're really going to only need two things. We're going to need our plarn, and we're also going to use a size K hook. So when working with plarn, it can be a little goofy at first because you have this big loop on the end. So it might seem kind of like, okay, you might split the yarn, or as you're working along, you might end up going through there. But really, if you use the similar concepts like we use with other kind of crochet, once you get started, it's not too bad. Now what we do want to make sure when we start, because this is a loop, we want to make sure our loop is even. Because if we hold it like this and start crocheting, we're going to have some really weird looking uh, bag. So we want to go ahead and smooth out our plarn so that way the loops are pretty even. And then we're just going to take this end here and start with a slip knot. Next we're going to make a foundation chain. You might find that the plarn is a little bit weird feeling at first to work with because it doesn't quite flow through the, your fingers in the hook like other yarns do, but it also kind of has a nice fluffy feel so you can just kind of play around with the tension. We're going to start by making our chain. And this chain is going to determine how um, wide the bag is. So I'm just going to, I'm not actually counting right now because I'm kind of making this up as I go so that way you guys you don't feel any pressure like oh we have to do this exactly a certain way just go ahead and start by making a chain that is the width you want your bag to be now as I chain I'm trying to make sure I keep my chain a little bit looser because I tend to do my chains very tight and so it can mess up my gauge further along in the project I'm debating if I, this is how wide I want my bag to be or if I want to go a little wider. I think I'm going to go slightly wider. Of course, the wider you go, the more plarn you're going to need, so keep that in mind. Cool. I did 21 chains going across for my bag. I'll go ahead and I'll measure this so we can see about how wide it is. So you can see this bag will be just shy of a foot wide. So that's a pretty good size and about what I'm going for. The idea for this bag is we're going to come down this way and we're going to make it twice as long as we want our bag to be tall. So this will be like the opening of the bag up here. So we're going to make it as twice as long as we want it to be tall and then we'll fold this piece that's long like this in half, whoop, if I can move my hands like that, and we'll stitch up the sides here and then we'll add a handle and that will create our bag. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and crochet along to make the bag longer this way. Now what I like about this kind of a bag is once you know what size you want to use, you can go ahead, or how, once you know how tall you want your bag to be, it's really easy because you can do any kind of pattern or any kind of stitch to make it that length just as long as you keep it a consistent width. So for mine, I'm going to do a pattern where I'm going to do two rows of double crochet and then a row of single crochet. And I'm just going to repeat that pattern until I get my bag as long as I want. So since I'm going to be starting with double crochet, I'm going to chain three for my turning chain. And then I'm going to skip one, two, three. Now you might be noticing it can be tricky to tell where the chain are. It might almost help if you look sideways because then if you look sideways you can kind of see and kind of feel 
where each chain is. So this is one, two, and three. So I'm not gonna come in right here. But first I need to yarn over and then complete my double crochet stitch in that spot. So you can see with our first few stitches here is the stitch itself is pretty tall. I'll get at the tape measure again. The stitch is about an inch tall, which that's what I like about Plarn is you can really quickly whip up one of these bags in hardly any time at all. And then I'm just going to do double crochet in every chain until I get to the other end. So here's what I've got so far. I just completed my first row of double crochet. And you can see that it's not completely even, but it is pretty consistent. You know, as I explained in some of my last videos, there are still knots and things in here, but you don't really notice them. It provides a pretty blended in look. So then for my next row, I'm going to do double crochet, coming back across this way. And then for my third row, do single crochet. And I'm just gonna repeat that process until my bag is as long as I want it to be. So this is what I have crocheted so far. I've been two rows of double crochet and then a row of single crochet on the top. And there's just some extra texture and character. And it also kind of changes the openness of the bag because the double crochet, you know, tend to have more space between them while the single crochet are tighter, which if you wanted a really nice tight bag, then I would do all single crochet. But personally, I'm not a fan of doing single crochet. So that's why I'm mixing it up with a double crochet so that I can make better progress. But I like this because it will give it kind of these bands of tighter texture and still be have an open airy kind of feel to it. So let me keep going. Hopefully I won't run out of my ball of plarn here. If not, I'll have to cut up some more bags and I'll show you what I've got in just a moment. So you can pause this here and start crocheting your own. So here are my bags coming along. I've already done three um, sets of the pattern, which the pattern is two rows of double crochet followed by a row of single crochet. And you can kind of start to see how the bag is going to work. Once we get this longer, we'll fold it up like this and stitch the sides. And this will be the top of our bag. Now, obviously this isn't long enough for a bag, but if you wanted to stop here, this would make like a cute little wallet or makeup case, whatever you want to make out of it. But I'm going to keep going and I'm actually going to go ahead and change colors. I'm going to go to this fun blue. And with changing colors, you can do this pretty much the same way you change colors regularly in crochet. Um, I'm going to be changing at the end of the row, so I'm just going to fasten this off. So to fasten it off, I finished my last stitch, so I'm going to do one more yarn over and pull this through. Take my scissors to cut the middle of this loop. Pull this end out, and then I'll just tighten it. And then when I work with my next color, I'm going to go ahead and just work over these tail ends and they'll blend right in. You can see with this plarn here that's feeding from the ball that it's the loops are fastened together here, but now I've got these two loose ends. So I've got plenty of options here. I can either retie these ends to make a loop or when I start working with this yarn the next time, I can just hold these two ends together and start crocheting as if they were one loop still and that'll work fine. Now, because I want to change at the end of the row, I'm going to actually fasten off. But if you want to make just fun, crazy stripes, you can actually go ahead and when you're looping your plarn together, let's say I got to that point. So let's say I got to this point. I was like, you know, let's change color. I can undo these loops here and then fasten on this blue loop and start working with the blue color. But I'm going to go ahead and just create a nice color change at the end so that it's kind of striped and I'm gonna start working across to my blue. So to join our next color, we're gonna do the floating double crochet stitch. That's what I like to call it. I've got another video that you can go watch to learn how to change colors like this, but it's pretty simple. We're gonna start by making a slip knot and inserting our hook, making it about the size of the hook. The plarn can be a little weird with a slip knot, so just kind of play around with it. I wanna to pull too hard so that it doesn't tear, but that's good enough what I've got there. So when I come here, I'm going to do a double crochet as if this yarn is attached, even though we know it's not. So I'm going to start with the yarn over. I want to make hold this tail so I keep this from unwinding that way. But then I'm going to insert my hook in this first spot here. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through, 
keeping these three loops on here, I'm going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And there you go. Now I've joined my next color. And then I'm just going to kind of tuck these tail ends under here. And I'm going to work over them when I do my next stitch. So it's basically the same way that I change color when I'm working with yarn. And you can go watch that video if you haven't seen that one so you can learn how. But that's the basic idea. So now I'm just going to keep going along with my pattern, but now I'm going to be using this fun blue. So you can see I've started working across with my blue, but what I do want to mention is what do you do when you run out of a color? So I've got another ball, just a small one of my blue here. And what's nice about the plarn is because of the loops, you, when you change colors, if it, you're using the same color, you're working in the middle of a row, you're going to use the same idea to connect it. So you're going to feed one through the other. We'll just pass the entire ball through there and cinch it up. And so now it's like I've extended the ball that was already, um, that ran out. And so I can just keep working across with my blue. This is my bag so far. What I've done so far is in my first color, I've done three rounds of the pattern. And in my second color, I have done two rounds of the pattern. Um, so then I'm going to go ahead and do, to make the bottom half of this side, I'm going to do one more pattern in my first bag. And then I'm just going to work and kind of create a symmetrical piece that'll run this way. And then I'll fold it in half, stitch up the sides, and have my finished bag. So I'm just going to add on my first color the same way I did the blue color and go from there. So check it out. I am halfway done with my bag. Now what I do want to mention is when I go to make the second side, there is going to be one little difference between this guy up here. When I do this, because the pattern involves two row of double crochet and then one row of single crochet, I'm going to let this bottom row of single crochet count as the bottom of my bag. So the fold is going to happen right here. So this will kind of fold upwards. And then I want my pattern to match going the next way. So what I'm going to do to repeat the same pattern on this side is I'm going to do two more rows of double crochet here and then the pattern's going to kind of flip where I'll do a row of single crochet, two rows of double crochet, a row of single crochet, two rows of double crochet, a row of single crochet, two rows of double crochet, and so on until it's the same height. So here we are. You can see that I've gone ahead and I've gotten to my second blue part. And I just want to talk about some things right now in case you have any questions. Hopefully that you've been able to follow along and get to this point yourself. And if so, awesome. But if you still have some questions, you can always comment below or hopefully I'll answer them right now. So just to talk about the bag itself and the basic idea, this is where we started up here. And the way the bag is designed, we're going to fold it in half like this. So that way the blue sides will line up. And then we'll stitch this side stitch that side and then the bag will be open from the top and we'll add handles and things. Um, something else I do want to mention is hopefully you can see now that how we're folding it, how the pattern kind of reverses the second time. When we first started working, we, the pattern was two rows of double crochet, a row of single crochet, two rows of double crochet, a row of single crochet. And we did three sets of that pattern in our first color two sets in our second color, and then one more set in our first color. And that got us to this point right here. But now because we're working up the other side, we're going to reverse the pattern. This single row of single crochet right here counts as our middle thing. So when we fold it in half, that's like the bottom. So we want the double crochet row here to line up with a double crochet row there. And so if you look at this, this side ends with single crochet here. So when we start the blue, on going this way, because remember we're working this way. So when we start the blue, we want to start with a row of single crochet. So the pattern kind of flips where we do single crochet, two rows of double crochet, one row of single crochet, two rows of double crochet. So hopefully I haven't totally confused you with that explanation. I'm going to type up a pattern and I'll put it up on my blog. So that way when I, you're like, what is she talking about? You can go there and check it out and be like, oh, that's what she's saying. The one other thing I want to talk about before I keep working on my bag and before you go back to working on yours is I, I use seven blue bags because that's what I had on hand. However, I just barely didn't have enough. I got to right about here and then I couldn't, I ran out. So you might notice that this side 
gets a little a little goofy as I go along there and you can see it from the other side you know it looks a little thicker and that's because I had to go ahead and take some of the bag handles and some of the random scraps left over from the bottoms of the bags and I had to go ahead and make some makeshift plarn. So it's not the same consistency as my other plarn, but that's kind of what I like about this bag, is it's not exactly a wrong way to do it. So it just kind of adds some more texture. I can always go back and trim these loose ends that are sticking out, and I probably will, to even it up. But with using those ideas that I had on my last plarn video about how to use the handles or how to use every little scrap, I was able to make do with what I had. So you're probably gonna want eight bags in your second color. So now all that's left to do is we need to finish our matching panel like this. We're going to crochet a row of single crochet, two rows of double crochet, a row of single crochet, two rows of double crochet, a row of single crochet, and then two more rows of double crochet. And that'll bring us to the top of our bag. So pause the video here and work on those stitches. So check it out. I just finished crocheting the plarn bag. We're going to go ahead and we'll fold it up and assemble it into an actual bag in just a moment. But what I want to do first is I want to take care of all these little pieces that are sticking out. If you want them sticking out in your bag, you can leave them and it'll just add some character to your bag. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and trim them. So pretty simple. You just want to make sure that you don't cut it so deep. Like see how here there's a knot? I want to make sure I cut to the right of it and not to the left, because if I cut to the left, it'll undo the loop, so it'd be like cutting the thread, like if you're working with yarn, it's the same idea. So I'm just gonna cut on the outside of this and just snip it off. Sometimes you can even just pull it off. Get this last little bit, and there we go. And now I'm just gonna do the same process on the rest of the bag, look for any little scraps sticking out, trim them off, and just making sure I don't go too deep and actually cut through the bag. 